questions of doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but as you'll also find, you beady-eyed people, at the end of this video. Uh, in answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is not only useful to the person who has, who has asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. Now today's question comes from um, uh, a, a lovely lady called Wuxi, or rather that's certainly the name that she's given me to tell you. <laughs> uh, and it goes as follows. Dear Mr. Soup, why, oh why, do archaeologists use the term artefact for everything that is found? If it was not meant at one time or another as art, then how can something be an artefact? Is, for example, a soda bottle from 1920 an artefact? How can an artefact be, uh, how, how can the word artefact be applied to a soda bottle and to a beautiful vase at the same time? Wouldn't the phrase historical item be more appropriate for the soda bottle and artefact more appropriate for the vase? Thank you. Wuxi. Well, Wuxi, you go really to the heart of one of the most important questions, not just in archaeology, but frankly in, in almost any, any academic pursuit, anything where we're seeking knowledge, um, and that is the use of language, appropriate language for the, for the, for the, the issues which are in play. In the case of archaeology, really, since since archaeology's inception as a as a as an academic pursuit, but also, frankly, just as soon as someone started digging and making observations about what they've dug up, the 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 search for for, for useful language and then. Uh, appropriate language and then I suppose language which has a certain objectivity uh, has been uh, ongoing. We um, argue it is still ongoing today. Uh, we are forever reassessing uh, how it is that we talk about the archaeology that we dig up because words and what you call something are, it, well, it's, 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 it is everything. If you describe something as, for example, I don't know, a hill fort, <coughs> then you are biasing how people are going to be looking at the thing. So archaeologists are, are, are very aware um, of, of the, the power of the, of the, the words that, and, the, and the vocabulary which we employ. So, so this search, this hunt for a, a suitable and I suppose in many ways a neutral way of referring to artefacts uh, is, is a very important one. So thank you for asking about this. Now, first of all, I have to say, initially I was going, well, why, why, why do you think artefact is connected with, with art, as it were? I know the word is in the word, um, but actually if you look at the, the origins of the word artefact, I can totally see where you're coming from. Uh, the, the origins actually lie in Latin, um, the word arte, uh, by or using art, and also the word factum, meaning something which is made. So a literal, I suppose, translation, if you want to, of, of, that, of that cognate, uh, is um, anything which has been made using the art of a person, or using the, uh, I suppose more broadly, the capabilities of a person to create something. So artifact then um, could be, as you say, something which is connected with art. So perhaps it is, in fact, uh, more appropriate to use uh, a different word when talking about a soda bottle and to use art, art, effect when talking about a vase. That said, though, there is a problem with that, 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 that initial observation. And the problem is that what you're doing is you're making a value judgment. You're sort of saying, well, this is art and this is not art. This is worthy of the title artefact, and this is not worthy of that title. Uh, after all, is there not, for example, artistry in the making of something and making of meaning, the creation, the creation of the of the soda bottle for containing soda? There's a certain artistry there, um, but also, I suppose, more to the more you know, even more to the point um, in archaeology, especially these sort of value judgments are increasingly difficult, especially the further the further back you go in time, or the, the less you understand a culture. For us, the difference between a Coke can and uh, a Ming vase is obvious. <laughs> well, yeah, clearly they're not the same, clearly, clearly they're, 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 they're not both worth the same, um, and they're certainly not both equally artistically beautiful, although some people would argue with you, with you on that. 
but when you, for example, I don't go back to ancient Greece, the distinction between uh, different types of pottery, different forms of pottery, while broadly understood, what now belongs in a museum was once used every day on the streets and would be smashed up and broken up and just it would be, it would be a throwaway object. So th this this judgment of what is artistically valuable and what is simply I suppose mundane or used for everyday purposes is not one which is easy to separate especially as I say when you're looking at the past and obviously archaeologists spend a lot of time looking at the past. Now um, move, I suppose moving beyond that sort of I suppose a very literal understanding of the word the origins of the word artifact since the mid middle of the 19th century we've been using artifact in some very specific ways the word artifact has come to mean uh, an object made by a human being typically one of cultural or historical interest and also something which is observed in a scientific investigation and this is this is crucial uh, or an experiment that is not naturally present but occurs as a result of the preparative or investigative procedure. Now that, I think, is the way in which archaeologists tend to use the word artifact. Uh, and yet it's not, because actually that second use, that second definition where anything which comes up as a result of scientific investigation is an artifact. In fact, I think I used the word artifact in the, the previous question of the Doom video along those lines, as in an, an anomaly, an artifact of data. Um, that is too broad, really, for archaeology. After all, where would the line be drawn? Everything, every particle of soil on an archaeological site, therefore, is an artifact because it's come uh, come about as part of a data set as a result of our interfering with the ground, that is, digging. So that's almost too broad, that sort of scientific definition of artifact. The definition of artifact is some anything which has been made by human hands harks back to that sort of that Latin origin, the artistry of something being made and, and the fact of it existing. So artifact kind of kind of uh, since then has, has really come to mean I suppose stuff which has been made by people. Now at this point it's, it's worthwhile going to a, an archaeological dictionary and I, I always go to my trusty penguin arch dictionary of archaeology. <laughs> um, it's not the most up-to-date copy but I just like the book. Uh, and in it the definition of artifact is an object made by humans. Uh, the line is sometimes hard to draw between a natural object and one used by man or humans. Um, as in, for example, an eolith, that is to say, a, 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 a rock which has been formed uh, naturally into a sharpened edge, which then has then been used by a human beings. So it doesn't have to be produced, but it can simply be used by. Um, but there is no doubt when it can be shown that people have shaped an artifact, um, that it is, in fact, an artifact, even if only accidentally through the course of its use. So in other words, artifact archaeologically is specifically something which has been interfered with by human beings and used by human beings. Now that can be very, very difficult. The line between, for example, a boulder which has been shifted in the course of, say, a ploughing event and a boulder which has been broken up and used as a stone tool, that's a, that's a spectrum which we're constantly, constantly discussing. And, uh, and perhaps, therefore, there is, there is, in fact, room for other language. Perhaps we should be more open to words other than artefact to describe, especially those sort of areas where it, it could be defined as being naturally occurring, it could be defined as having been interfered with by human beings, and therefore an artefact in the archaeological sense. Now, you suggest in your email a historical item. It does, in fact, found, sound fairly neutral. Um, historical item. That's why that's not too bad. But there is a problem with historical item. And we sort of come back to this notion of value judgments. Historical is a value judgment. Uh, a little bit like the, the defining between artistry, artistically valid and mundane. Uh, you also have this problem of historical. Historical implies, I suppose, historically significant. Now, I know, I know that's not what you mean. But the problem is, is that language is, um, well, at best, it is open to interpretation, and at worst, it is, it is entirely beyond our control how other people uh, decide to make use of a word. So historical could imply that you're saying this is historically significant, as opposed to simply being something from history or from, hu from human history. Now, the word item sounds, again, fairly neutral. 
but it implies that every item is noteworthy in its own right, i.e. Um, that every item should be itemized, if, if there's a mean. So, for example, I don't know, if you came across a pile of smashed up Roman roof tile, which we, we frequently do on Roman sites, certainly Roman pottery, should every single fragment be individually itemized? If each and every one is a historical item, is each and every one worthy of its own finds bag? Every, each and every one worthy of its own photograph and drawing? The answer is ideally probably yes i know some archaeologists who would say oh well definitely totally it's all it's all but in reality no that would be lumped as broadly speaking a context unless there were certain tiles which are of special interest for example anti-fix tiles that go on the side of a roof or on the end of the roof with with a, a legion's logo on for example um most tiles would be lumped together so an item implies uh, individual attention is worthy, and that's not necessarily always true for an artifact. Um, hopefully uh, you understand, understand what, where I'm coming from there. Um, now another one could be possibly ancient object. Uh, for example, um, uh, I don't know, I can't really think of, of, uh, of many things in archaeology which aren't ancient objects um, in some way, and, uh, but then again, there's another value judgment there. Ancient. Ancient has a very specific meaning and actually arguably it is it means something which is beyond historical. Uh, ancient isn't necessarily, doesn't really cover archaeology. It covers ancient archaeology. It doesn't necessarily cover, for example, more recent archaeology. Uh, and object is actually even more broad and even more uh, fraught with pos problems and possibilities than the word artifact. Object uh, can be anything in the material world. You know, this this Lego head is an object. Um, <laughs> uh, the floor is an object. The uh, the the the, the, um, the condensed uh, water vapor that makes up a cloud is actually arguably an object. So uh, it becomes problematic there as well. So an ancient object. Are you talking about ancient clouds, for example, or yeah, ancient stones? Again, we're moving away from specific specificity and uh, and I suppose an attempt to be neutrally specific towards a sort of a broad and really um, I suppose meaningless is the wrong word, but uh, a language which is too fraught with too many meanings. So it's difficult to come up with a, with a with an alternative to the word artifact. Now there are various alternatives. If you go if you go to the thesaurus, for example, antique, antiquity, curio, memento, monument, memorial, scrap, ruins, trophy, vestige, um, art, design, product, result, um, uh, craftsmanship. Uh, achievement, but again, no, m most of those words have specific values attached to them. And as soon as you, for example, say this is an achievement, a historical achievement, for example, this stone tool uh, is not, is, you know, if you're describing it as this is an achievement, then you are raising it up, you are making it distinct from other artifacts in a way which you may not necessarily intend. Your search for, a, for a, an appropriate language, a, a neutral language in that sense, has brought you to a point of using language which is in fact inappropriate and which is, which is conveying a meaning beyond that which you intend. So it is really difficult to come up with a language which is neutral. As soon as we name something, we rush to assign meaning to it. People find it really difficult to give something a name without going, and what does that mean? And what is the history of that thing? And what does, so on and so forth. It's really hard. And actually I've done a previous video on, uh, I think it's called What's in a Name. I'll put a, a clickable link to it at the end of this video. Where, um, uh, for example, Iron Age hill forts really do suffer from being called hill forts. Um, now there's lots of evidence that, that's, that's constantly arguing about what this that what these sites are, but if you call them a hill fort, you're, you're sort of biasing the interpretation from the get-go. So it is difficult, extremely, but, but perhaps there is room for language which sits somewhere between artifact, ecofact, and feature, for example. Uh, it's just simple, it's simply um, a case of, of those are the best ones which, which we've been able to come up with in the past hundred years or so. So I'm not saying that, that, that no, you know, there's no room at all, Wuxi, for, for other language. Of course there is. But as soon as you start asking, well, first of all, what's wrong with the language that we use? And then secondly, what, what shall we propose to replace it? 
we we come up against all these these structural value laden and um, uh, and I suppose problematic a minefield of of, uh, of etymology if nothing else um, and uh, and that really starts to get in the way of archaeology as it were um, the, the, because we're not using, able to find suitable terms we start to actually distance ourselves from this, the study of the stuff that we're trying to describe so it's 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 difficult but maybe there is actually a language that can fit between these ones uh, and in fact you're you're totally right absolutely right Wushi uh, to ask this sort of question of the language that which archaeologists use but also frankly the language which we use in everyday life. Um, questioning language is how language improves. Questioning language is also how language evolves. Um, notice improvement and evolve evolution are not necessarily the same thing um, but also actually questioning language is how in the past certainly within my lifetime archaeology has come on in leaps and bounds. I, I was born in 1984 um, and in that time Language in in archaeology. Obviously, I wasn't <laughs> wasn't born as an archaeologist, but in my lifetime, archaeology has really uh, gathered pace in the way that it tackles its use of language. And um, and perhaps words like artifact should be reevaluated. Um, perhaps we should be trying to come up with a new language set. But I have to say, today I have failed in that attempt. Heartfelt apologies. <laughs> um, but as I say, hopefully you forgive me for that because it's not easy coming up with a new way to talk about archaeology. Anyway, Wuxi, thank you so much for asking the question. Uh, hopefully this hasn't been too much of a rambling answer. Hopefully uh, my, my, sort of my logic has made sense all the way through. And hopefully anyone else watching this uh, has, has, I suppose, come along with me as well and, and is just as interested in this question. It is an interesting, very theoretical, very geeky, but very interesting question. So if you have any, any thoughts or comments, please do comment below. I'm sure Wuxi would like to read those comments. Uh, well, indeed, indeed, so would I. And, um, uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions for alternative language which archaeologists could use, uh, obviously, you know, not swearing, um, <laughs> then please do comment below. I would love to, again, I'd love to read uh, where this discussion goes. As ever. Uh, first of all, thank you once again to Wushi for sending in the question, and thank you for you guys, uh, or to you guys, for watching uh, this video. Until next time, do take care. Bye bye.